Acts chapter 17. Let's do that. Uh, just follow along with me, if you will. And then uh, we left off in, in verse number 26 or so. And that's what we'll study today. Acts chapter 17, if you will. And verse number one. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica where, where there was a synagogue, where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude and of the chief women, not a few. But the Jews, which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort and gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, these that have turned the world upside down are come here there also whom Jason hath received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and of the other, they let them go. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, also of honorable women, which were, of, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached to Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go, as it were, to the sea, but Silas and Timotheus abode there still. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus for to come to him with all speed, they departed. Now, when Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore, disputed he in the synagogues with the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. some said, what will this babbler say? Other some, he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. For thou bringest strange things, excuse me, thou, for thou bringest certain strange things to our ears, we would know that, therefore what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there, which were there, spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temple made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands, as though he, he needed anything seeing he giveth to all life and breath in all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For, if, for in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring." For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked and others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them, howbeit certain men clave unto him and believe, among the which was Dios, Di, Dionysius the Arapagot, and a woman named Damaris and others with them. Now we left off, if you will, look with me at verse number 23. Today's topic is, can everybody know the Lord? 
And the reason I, t I titled this this way, when you're in ministry and you're sharing God's grace message, particularly that men are dead in sins and that even their religious devotions won't do anything to please God, that they're dead, they're, 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 they've broken God's law, and the only way to have peace with God is to be perfect. 100% perfection from, from the time you're conceived to the time that you, where you wouldn't die unless you're the Lord. You, you have to have 100% perfection. And then they would say, well, nobody's perfect. And so people want to know, wait a minute, how can those who, who never heard about Jesus really be saved? How, how does God deal with the, they'll, they'll bring up the, the people in the African bush or the indigenous people. I heard people bring that up. And so the question comes, can everybody know the Lord? And I'm going to answer from the scriptures affirmative. Yes, everybody, every human being that's ever been born from Adam to the last person born, which is going to go on forever, is can and, and can know the Lord and will know the Lord. Now, some are going to know him uh, by subjection. He's going to they, they're going to they're going to reject them in their lifetime. But they're going to say Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the father. They're going to either do it by subjection or they're going to do it willingly. I pray that they do it willingly in their lifetime and then they won't be forced. But everybody's going to know the Lord. But can someone who has never heard of Jesus Christ, how can they know the Lord? Well, we're going to look at what Paul, Paul says here in, in verse number 23. Look at verse 23. Acts chapter 17, verse 23. Paul, as he looks at these Athenians, they were heathen Gentile. What about the heathen, people might ask? He says in verse 23, for as I passed by and beheld your what devotions, the first thing I want us to see. And we left off last time that not only do Christians have devotions, you know, if you grew up in a Christian home, your, your father might have led the family in a devotion, the family devotion. You open the book of Psalms, you read Psalm 23, you have a prayer, you know, the devotions. Christians, religious people do it all the time and they're not bad in and of themselves. 